Hello everyone, welcome back. It's Tana here, and if you're new, welcome to my video for the Save the Crafty YouTuber video hop. Uh, today you guys are going to get to see a ton of video tutorials created by a group of talented crafters. And we're coming together to give our viewers a chance to discover all these amazing crafters and to help each other reach monetization goals. So here I have a bunch of Heffy Doodle products. I had them listed there for you. And I'm also going to use the Pear Blossom Press Easy Lights. I'm not going to show you a lot of coloring, just how I do her hair here real quick. A lot of people are interested in how I color hair. Uh, sorry, I'm hiding out in the car here. It's crazy in my house. I live in New York, so... All you have to do when you watch the videos today, guys, is like the video, consider subscribing, and then click the link in the description box below for the next video. Don't forget to comment as you hop along. There's tons of prizes to give away, and the more you comment, the better your chances of winning. You should indicate USA or international so that prizes can be awarded appropriately. Some of them are physical prizes. Uh, so, some of them are give, uh, gift cards, gift certificates. Um, you don't have to comment on every video, but if you do, your chances increase of winning. I have a prize personally to give away on my channel. A $25 gift certificate to the online crafty store of your choice. You must comment below on my video to have a chance to win that. Comments are due by April 5th across the hop. And anything else you need to know will be in the description box. So let's get to what we're doing here. I have the Cloudy Skies Heffy Doodle Stencil, and I didn't want my colors to get mixed. They actually did the first time I did the background, so I pulled in the stencil I made with my Lawn Fawn Cloud, cloud uh, Edge Borders dies. I always get that name mixed up. So I would have a third one, and my colors wouldn't mix. So I just did the outline, taking turns with the colors as their uh, Catherine Pooler inks listed above there. And then I filled in all the white spots with those colors. I wanted it to have an enchanted look. So I thought I got what I was aiming for, pretty much. Excuse me if I sound a little out of breath. I'm sick. The kids have had me sick all winter long, off and on. So I've been losing my voice, everything else. And this is what we ended up with. And by the way, this panel is a full-size card panel, four and a quarter by five and a half. Now we're going to cover those cutout windows with some yellow vellum. Just take a piece of vellum, color it any color you want, and you have colored lights. Um, I did put some Wink Stella pen on the vellum, and I learned very quickly you cannot put that over the yellow marker because it'll come off on vellum. So I ended up putting it on the other side. And I just glued all those with my two-way glue pen behind the windows. Now we have a circle cut out of silky sky tonic mirrored cardstock and then a pink ring to go behind that cut out of just pink glitter paper from ac moore that i picked up before they closed and i will have the two infinity circle dies from hero arts that i used to make that circle fit behind there and then i also use that same mirrored cardstock to cut out the word magical and that has four layers total three layers of cardstock and then one layer of mirror card stock. Now I'm just adding some clouds to the back of my circle so that my castle is not floating in midair. And I used blue frost, I think it is, pearlescent card stock by Tonic for that. And they, I also use the same uh, pearlescent card stock for the clouds that you will see at the bottom of the card later on. I gotta say, I was really happy with the way this card turned out. I thought it looked super cute. Sometimes I have a problem with scene cards. Uh, I see something in my head and it doesn't exactly turn out the way I want it to in the end. I probably get them about 75% right with what I see in my head and then I'm disappointed the other 25%. So now that we have those clouds uh, glued into our circle, I took, I colored like three castles. So I took one of the castles and lined it up behind the castle that's in the circle so I could poke holes through our panel so I know where to let the light in. And I used a 1 16th uh, punch to punch holes in that. I will tell you, I ended up just cutting the whole area out later on like I did with the windows. So the 
when you see the final card, the area I cut out of the castle windows is the same area that is cut out of the card panel. It, you could just, the dots showed behind the windows, so it wasn't enough light, and I didn't want you to be able to see it like that. <clears throat> so it was just easier to cut it all out from behind before I put the card together. So I drew a line there on the diagonal. I usually, when I have more than one layer of something going on in my scene cards, I'll mark it with different lines of pencil so I know exactly where each one goes. So we have two layers here. I didn't want our princess to look like she was just floating in the clouds down there. And now we're going to take this little set for interactive cards from My Favorite Things. I actually ordered the Heffy Doodle Interactively Yours, but it did not come in time for me to use it on this video. And the push didn't come out dark enough when I stamped it, so I went over it with my memento marker. And she's going to be over our push button for the easy lights. So I'm just going to glue her down in the corner there with some Nouveau Deluxe Adhesive. And now you see me doubling up my foam tape. I doubled it up, and then I'm going to cut it into cut it in half so it's a quarter inch wide each. Now I'm just measuring in to the center of her dress where it says push so I know where to mark it on the panel that's going to go behind the front panel. I always do an extra panel when I'm doing light up cards. I don't put the light up stuff on the card base itself. It's just I, I think it's better that way. I'm just going to use some double-sided score tape to adhere that whole battery compartment with the push button into that area I marked and measured with a pencil. Simple. Stays down like that. Never had any problems. And I'm just going to make sure it's in the right spot. I also colored yellow where those windows will be, where the lights were or where the lights will be, just in case you could see the background through the windows. And now it's just a matter of coiling the extra wire for your lights. And trust me, you want extra wire. You don't want to never not have enough. And then lining up the lights where I need them. So for the short window in the middle tower, it's going to go right exactly where it needs to be. You get three lights with each battery compartment. And the other two lights are going to be lined up right in between the two windows vertically on each of the outer towers. And it worked out perfect. You can see lights in all the windows this way. You can also use any tape you want, uh, as long as you don't have wide open spaces where the wires are going to be seen. You can use any tape you want to tape these down. I would advise coiling any extra wire like I did, though. Don't put any creases in it. You know, I don't know if that would damage the wire. Other than that, they are so easy. I, I, if It can't possibly get any easier than this. I probably wouldn't have done so many light-up cards in the past few months if it wasn't for these easy lights. So here you see me stamping out the rest of our sentiment. Unfortunately, I'm stamping it out on the same paper as the clouds, but I ended up liking it better on... The trimmings, they're actually the trimmings when I trimmed down my Bristol cardstock before I ink blended, or after I ink blended. I liked those better on top of the clouds. Uh, the strips that match the clouds just blended in too much. So we have wishing you a magical birthday. And that's our sentiment right there. I think it looks super cute. And don't forget your tittle. Did you see that? That was my tittle. Man, was that thing a pain in the butt to glue together four times. So now we're just going to peel all the stuff off of our foam tape. I always add a little bit of glue to my foam tape just to make sure that everything stays together. Don't put so much on it that you get it on your battery, though. That would be bad. So don't do that. So I don't know if you could hear the difference in the voiceover, but I just dropped my microphone after I said that, or rather knocked it over. So I had to start again. Anyway, we're going to glue that or put that panel together, hold it down to the glue on the top of the foam tape dries, and now we're going to glue that to our card base. And I'm using art glitter glue for that. So this is the back of that panel, and I'm just going to line it up with my card base 
And this is it, guys. Don't forget to leave a comment below if you want a chance at winning my prize. And don't forget to visit Justine's blog and her YouTube channel. Her blog will have all the details of the giveaway, and I will have that linked below as well. I hope you guys are enjoying the hop. Have a wonderful day, and stay safe, everybody. Stay safe, stay healthy. Bye-bye for now.